Me and my friends have been playing on Superflat SMP for one year and nine days technically. And we've amassed over a hundred real life days or 2400 hours of playtime. So let's make a world tour and look into everything we've done. So to start off the nether roof, the place where we can get from everywhere to anywhere else. And we have big plans, we'll build like biomes here and it will be completely unrecognizable. But we haven't done that yet unfortunately. And so far there's only like very few non-decorative things that I won't bother to mention. Then there's the giant Technoblade statue, something that I built in June to release it on July 1st because that's the day that unfortunately the So Long Nerds video was uploaded. So Technoblade never dies as long as we remember him. So I was the person who mostly built this although I got a bit of help from the others. And then reminiscent of the potato war I also planted lots and lots of potatoes down here. I don't know, like 50,000 or something maybe. Then there's the start of my mega base where I already placed over 200,000 grass and dirt blocks to make all of these islands, which will be modified. This is not their final form. Then I also started work on a lot of mountains that will go all the way around here and look like a big hardcore heart on a map. But they will be even higher than this and I've done like 2% of them. They're gonna be lots of work. And here is the most finished part of it. A little village on this island and all of the 10 islands around this base will have little villages like this on them. But I still need to finish this one. Like there's, there's a lot of decorative stuff that I still need to do. I don't think it's perfect yet. But if you will continue watching my channel that will be the thing I will mostly be doing for the next few months. Probably years actually. So subscribe. But to come back to the actual world tour that's about as much as I can say about my mega base. I mean I also did a bit of this island but I honestly need to modify everything quite a bit because these houses have become too generic I realized after building them they just look too alike. Even though it's a good design there needs to be more variation. So I will make the mega base look as perfect as possible in the future. And by the way it's not just gonna be these outer islands and the mountains. The biggest part is actually inside these mountains which will be a giant lush jungle forest. But now let's move on to the next thing that I can find by continuing to fly in this direction. Which is my 372 villager trading hole that I very recently finished. And that was so much work. I still gotta design a building around it. That's also gonna be quite a bit of work. So I have 128 masons selling me, well, the normal mason stuff like quartz and bricks. But then also these custom blocks. I've marked which mason sells me which block. And that's pretty handy probably to find something. But then we also have villagers for every single type of enchantment. 64 cartographers so that I can do the duplication emerald kind of bug or glitch or whatever you wanna call it. We actually have a raid farm so it's not really necessary but it's necessary for a video I wanna make. Then there's these clerics which I can use to buy mainly like glowstone and XP bottles and lapis. That's the main reason. Then there's 48 farmers which is exactly enough to restock a whole shulker of golden carrots when I run out of food. A bunch of fishermen which sell me campfires and those are useful for building. And 4 shepherds so that I can buy some painting. If I need hundreds of paintings I'm probably just gonna craft them with wool. But if I just quickly need a few I thought it might be useful if I can actually buy them. And then the most painful part, a bunch of fletchers selling every single type of useful tipped arrow. I think there's 33 of them. But I only have like 22 different ones because like if it's the exact same effect but one lasts longer and one doesn't last as long then I'll just have gotten the one that lasts longer. I don't think I'll need a shorter a shorter time at any point. And then there's also of course the standard ones to just buy tools and weapons and armor. Next up I have a big industrial district which isn't this. This is just a farm I decided to design myself which never worked. But I spent 20 hours building it so that was painful. But then here's the actually useful part of the industrial district. Which is one raid farm, pretty basic. An iron golem farm, also pretty basic. A creeper farm that I designed myself and I'm pretty proud of. That used to be a normal mob farm that farms every type of mob. With just like one flying machine going back and forth in there. But now I have like 30 shulkers of string and 10 shulkers of bone blocks. So I figured I probably don't need all the mobs anymore. And I turned it into an only creeper farm. And with free cam you can see how I designed this. It's basically carpet so that spiders don't spawn. Then cats so that the creepers spawning here in the middle run away from them. 
And then a water that comes and goes all the time here, although I, I need to fix this, something's broken here. But water that gets dispensed and then retracted again, so that the creepers run here when there's no water and get flushed down when there is. And as you can see, I have quite a lot of gunpowder. There's also this extremely overpowered cobblestone farm, which just gives me sharkers and sharkers of cobblestone. Not gonna run out of that anytime soon, as you can see here. Then a flower farm, which gives me a bunch of flowers. Also designed by myself, actually, but not very complicated. A moss farm that I built from a tutorial. All the farms I didn't design myself will be linked in the description, by the way. And this one also works pretty well. I have, like, sharkers and sharkers of moss at home right now. Then the most painful one, a super smelter that I don't think works at the moment. I'll have to get, like, a bunch of fuel and fix it at some point. But I don't really have any fuel at the moment. And the best farm of all of them, the flying machine farm, with a flying machine designed by Borken, I believe that's the name. And he basically designed a flying machine which doesn't break when you unload it, because normally they do that. And so I'm basically farming everything you can farm with flying machines. And when I need clay, which I have, as you can see here, needed quite a lot in this world, already mined 43,000, then I just place all of it above the dripstones. Then I have my starter base, which I built in the first few weeks of the server. And I think it looks pretty good. I like like the design of the houses and stuff like that. I also had to mine so much wheat for all of these roofs, but that's besides the point. So I think it looks pretty good, but there's one problem. There is basically no interiors. The only houses with interior are this one on the tree where I have a little school where I can write down my plans. This one which covered my old villager farm and also all of these villagers down here are below it. Although I'm actually gonna have to reuse that for something else. Because now I have the proper trading hall, I'll kill all of these villagers and remove this farm. So there'll be a different interior there too. And then the most important house by far, here is my storage system. Which is actually very well sorted. Except for a few sharkers here. This is why I didn't need the general mob farm anymore by the way. I have over a double chest of sharkers of mob materials. So that was my starter base. Next up the only base that's exclusively in the lower nether. The base of starboard Venus which I think looks pretty good. Like look at all this terraforming and these towers. And also this parkour here. I just love how it looks. And by parkour I mean these end rods because they are fun to parkour around. And I also like all of these pathways which just go everywhere. There's also the Slim Brothers playing on here. Slim K and Slim G. They aren't actually brothers but they have similar names so we call them that. And this is kind of their old overworld base which is a bit all over the place and I think they will upgrade and change it at some point to actually look good because they've built a lot of other stuff that does look very good. This giant rocket behind their base for example which isn't even finished yet there's gonna be so much more next to it. I think Slim G is currently designing it. And then inside the rocket is the portal room because they actually have an end portal here and also a very fancy system where you can turn on and off the sand duper. But now let's go to the end and here we have the end side of the sand duper with a very big storage down below, so we shouldn't ever run out of space for sand. And then if we walk out of that area, there's the main end island, which we will transform, but we haven't done that yet. But we did of course build an enderman farm, with a giant glass platform right here that I can land on. And a bit of a room which I designed it, it looks okay, but I was under time pressure, so we'll definitely upgrade this to actually looking good at some point. But now let's go through this portal where we land on a ginormous spaceship. And when I say the Slim Brothers have built things that look good, I didn't actually mean the rocket around the end portal. I meant this, because this is ginormous. Now a lot of the design work was done by somebody on Planet Minecraft and they mostly modified the outside. That person will be linked in the description. But despite there being so many blocks and so much to look at, the inside is probably even more impressive. They also have their custom space suits by the way. But if we go in here, there's really long hallways with all sorts of decoration, like this, or this big table, I think they will have a map of the whole end right here. The cannon room, because believe it or not, there's actually working TNT cannons in the spaceship. Then this, where magma and glowstone is getting fused into this. Shroom light, it's called shroom light. Then another layer with rooms for different people. And also a secret entrance, of course, where you can find, well, a, a secret room, be because it's a secret entrance. Kind of obvious. There's also another room on the other side. Here will be a giant storage system, I believe. A nice piston door to get to the 
I don't know, fighter chat, whatever this is. As well as this one, which goes to the exact same fighter chat, but on the other side. And I believe that's basically everything for the spaceship so far. And the last base is Patrick's base, where you spawn in this little dirt area down there that you can see behind me. And then he's built a bunch of floating islands. Like this one with a kind of wood tower. This one with a few villagers in a house. And this one with a very nice, uh, I guess, modification of the typical desert pyramid. There's also a mob farm. And there's this archer statue, a sugarcane farm and the dome. So that's it with all the bases and let's finish it off with the shopping district. This is the spawn and our main point of the server with the most things and the most finished things by far. And I did just realize that we are done with bases is a pretty big lie. There's a few people with their base around here. For example Aurora and Pangolin who have built this whole area and made it their absolutely beautiful base. Just look at all the things here. The llama worshipping area and the ever expanding terrain with all the beautiful houses on it. And there's a lot of interior as well but I honestly don't know that much about it so I'm just gonna try to show you as much as possible. There's this with the llama that for some reason just doesn't die even though it's from a wandering trader and shot. Well not die but despawn. You can go down here and find this kind of room which I think used to burn here with stuff in there. Oh no, no, it's a, it's a basalt farm. I just remembered. And a stone farm. Nice. This beautiful enchanting room with a floating enchanting table. A whole kind of interior cave type of thing. This here with peach ice cream apparently. And also raspberry chocolate cookies. Okay, that's a custom design. I didn't even know that was in our texture pack. A lot of trap doors here. Gummy slimes. The tree you could already see. And also adopt a rock where you can go and adopt these little rocks. Which in reality are totems of undying but they are retextured. And all the rooms here are really well decorated. Aurora is probably the best builder on this server. Her channel, as all the other channels of course, is linked in the description. We then also have the tree that you spawn in when you come from the nether. The main island which is the thing that has been here for the longest with a few shops, mainly mine. So this is my like rocket, golden apple, golden carrot shop. And also my mine shop if we go in here. It's a cave that I built where you can buy all sorts of things that, well, you can find in caves like stone variants, diorite, andesite, stone, cobblestone, granite, copper, bones, because skeletons, string, gold, and music discs. And also iron. Although I'm out of that because my iron farm broke. I, I gotta fix that one. Then where I'll sleep right now is the minigame island from Slim G and Slim K. They built a bridge minigame where you have to basically like try and knock off the other person with only your fists. A reserved spot for a minigame that isn't built yet I think. A tag minigame which is where you just like stand here and then one person has the tag item and then you round, run around until you hit someone and then that person has to pick it up and it goes for like three minutes and after three minutes whoever is tagged loses. Pretty fun, we've played it quite a bit in the server. And there's also this currency for doing stuff here where they build exchange rooms and stuff like that, but I don't think it's properly fought out and working yet. Talking about minigame island, this is one of my minigame islands where we planned on playing a little game, but that, that never really worked. But the island still looks decent. Then there's the armory, which as you can see is also designed by Aurora and you can take stuff that you need from here if you don't already have it. Or also take some kits to retrieve stuff that you lost when you die. Here's the taking area. Also with this nice moss carpet and pot design. And then this, this and also this I think are areas for putting items there and then like exchanging them or something. I guess it's just donating to the community and if somebody needs something they can take it. There's also Aurora's small rocket shop where she sells firework rockets. Then the island she built when she had the dragon egg and then with this island she kind of gave it away in a puzzle hunt. I believe Slim Chi found it. An old shop from her where she used to do like cleaning chops to clean up people's spaces. Also I forgot about the Colosseum on the main island where we also had a firework show for the one year anniversary party. Then there's another minigame island from me where I built a big grumbot and I believe it's out of stock right now but normally if you press this button you hear a little tune and get one, no actually it does work, you can get a little tool or a try again thing.
you can also press this button. But if you did get, a, but if you do get a gold tool, you can go to this golden apple and mine the blocks for that tool. So say you have a hole, you can mine the hay bales. If you have a shovel, you can mine this, the soul soil. And in the apple, I hit ancient debris and a bunch of shulkers with valuable stuff that people try to find. So it's basically gambling and I wanted to make money, but I actually put a lot more money into it than I ended up making. But it was fun to do and I think it looks good and is a nice idea. There's also this little shopping stand where you can buy tools if you want to or take scaffolding if you want to go like up the upper or exchange some coupons that you can get for items. Then there's these two islands that recently popped up which I believe are also from Aurora and Pengal. There's this island and also the start of another one which I believe are the starter base from Cell. There is the Western Island shop belonging to Slim Chi, which sells a bunch of stuff as you can see here. Then I think Flosky built this as a starter base. And the biggest thing here is my touch grass island where I wanted to sell lots of wood, basically every wood and also a bunch of other, I guess, lush stuff. And this took so long. I, I spent two months making this and making the video about it. It's got like 150 views. It really wasn't worth it for that. But but it looks great. It was worth it for the looks. As you can see, there's one tree for every type of wood in the game. And also these pathways going everywhere. As well as these little stands for buying dirt, moss, grass and something else that I forgot. Then this river where I also wanted to sell something. I forgot what though. I, I kind of didn't really stock any of this on the island because I'd already spent two months just building it. And lastly, there's a big wheat field here with another path where you, I think, should be able to buy wheat. Or maybe it was mud bricks, I don't know anymore. And then the stuff that we built really recently. Because this is what we needed for our anniversary event. First of all, a new way of storing all of our community ancient debris. Because this pedestal really didn't look that good. I built it, but don't tell anyone. An island for somebody to hold a speech if they want to get elected as president or just were. And another one where people can sit and watch that. And then a presidential election house where you can walk in and vote for somebody. Mock Swamp ended up becoming our president when he just joined the server. Yeah, it's kind of useless because he won't rejoin, so he won't actually do anything as president. But it happened, as you can see here. Also, this is the back side of the house for voting, because from the front you can't really see a lot because of this big sign. But now, the last island, the stats island. This is where I collected 8 stats from every single member. Not actually, not all of them replied, but most members. And then I showcased Chalkers opened, rockets used, distance by elytra, players killed, amount of times killed by a player, amount of deaths, time since last death, and time played by using concrete as graphs. And why is it twice as high as the graph? Well, that's because at the anniversary, I put all of this concrete powder you can see now above a sign and then I went into these panes and broke the sign so that it would fall down and reveal the graph. I think it was pretty cool. Was it worth the 25 hours I spent on it? Yeah, yeah, actually it was. And by the way, the way to get into it is a redstone mechanism I designed myself. And that's probably the most complicated redstone I've ever done because I'm not really good at that. And as you can see, there's also a big house in the middle, which I designed the exterior of, but Slim Chi designed the interior of which also looks pretty good, b besides the Schalkers that shouldn't be standing here. And it will actually be expanded because he liked it so much and wants it to be the community house now. So there will be a cellar here, a more decorated room here later, and another decorated room all the way up here. And by the way, this house is actually functional because people can sit here and then play statistics roulette. How does that work? Well, you go here, you roll a roulette category, it's mob stats, so you press mob stats, and then trader llamas killed. So then everyone bets at least one ancient debris and they go into mobs and look at how many trader llamas they've killed. But they don't tell the other people and then they either reveal their number or they put another one in. That happens until everyone has revealed their number and then the person with the most trader llamas killed gets all the debris. And I literally put every type of mob stat and every type of general stat there is in this. And also lots of items with stats for how much they've been mined or dropped or crafted or stuff like that. And talking about statistics, renaming all of those papers might explain the amount of interactions with anvils I've had. And that's basically everything on this server, which is already quite a lot. I thought this was gonna be a lot quicker to record until I didn't, I realized how much we've done here. And now that I'm done with the whole world tour, if you wanna see how we develop this world, you should watch the video on my right. And also like this one and maybe recommend it to someone who might be interested in a giant super flat survival world.